What's up guys? So just uh, shooting a little bit at my target. I've been shooting at this target uh, for a year straight and I've been shooting through the entire off season. Um, I would say I've probably put about a thousand arrows into this, this target. This is definitely an option that anybody can afford and it's definitely worth the money. What's up guys, it's Mark here, and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So, I recently built these uh, these arrows, I love them. The only issue that I've found with them is that they're micro diameter, so they're four millimeters wide, so they're pretty skinny. Um, and to add weight to the front, I used these outserts made by Ethics Archery. And if you can see that, there's a little bit of a lip right here, where it kind of sticks out a bit. The problem with that is if you're shooting at a bag target, which I've always done, um, the stuff that's inside of the bag is mostly like old clothes and things like that. They stuff it with anything that they can find. And sometimes the threads of those clothes will get stuck on that little lip. And these arrows get buried and will not come out. And in fact, I've noticed that if you leave your bag target outside, it's going to get wet. Those threads start to tighten up even more and it becomes harder and harder to get your arrows out. And honestly, I've spent way too much money on these bag targets to continue doing it. So today I came up with a hopeful solution. I'm going to build my own target. I'm going to do it super cheap and it's going to be a target that's going to last an incredibly long time. So let's go inside. And I'm going to show you how I do it. All right, guys, this is the solution to my archery target problem. As you can see, this box has a strange name on it. It says, Papa Babe. Papa Babe? Papa Babe. Papa Babe, or Papa Babe, I'm not sure. This is a bunch of uh, exercise, uh, exercise room floor mats. These are foam floor mats that I ordered on Amazon, super cheap. I think I paid like oh, just under $100 for all of them. They're uh, three quarter inch thick and two feet by two feet. Let me just pull one out so you guys can see them. So this is what they look like. All right, you've seen this stuff before, probably at the gym. And this is what I'm gonna use to make a sweet archery target. So let me get them all out, and I'm gonna show you the plan. <clears throat> so this is the basic configuration. You can probably already see where I'm going with this. And as it is right now, it's actually really similar to a target that you can buy online called the Big Boy Target, I think, uh, where basically it's a bunch of stacked foam mats and then it has like a plate across the top or a frame of two by fours that you can then tighten down and I think they just have straps around it to hold it all together. Um, I could do that, but this is a pretty long distance for your arrow to travel and I really think it's unnecessary. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to cut these right down the middle, like this. And so I'm really going to have a target that's only 12 inches thick. But I think as long as I'm able to tighten down uh, the 2x4s uh, the that I'm going to have on top of it, it's going to keep that sandwich together really well. I think it's going to stop arrows with no problem. All right, so I finished cutting all these things in half and I stacked them up and it is quite the stack. Um, each of these, like I said, is three quarter inches, but I think they're a little bigger. Yeah, they're a little bit bigger than that. So when I calculated this out based on the sizes it said on Amazon, I figured this thing was gonna be 36 inches tall, 
It looks like it's a little bigger than that. Looks like we're at about 40 and a half inches. I'm gonna take a subset of these outside, throw something heavy on top of them and shoot it with my bow just to make sure that this actually was gonna stop my arrow. All right guys, so right over here, I've got, uh, let me just focus on that. I've got the, um, a stack of these foam mats set up on this uh, sawhorse and I put that cooler on top of it that I filled up with water. Um, these are the arrows that I've been shooting. These are gonna be my hunting arrows. Um, they're uh, 589 grains, so they're pretty heavy. Uh, they should penetrate pretty good, so I'm like four yards away from this target. I'm gonna send one, and uh, hopefully it stops it. I, uh, I'm like 50-50 on whether it's gonna stop it or not, and I uh, really hope it does, because otherwise I just wasted like $100. No problem. So the arrow just barely stuck through uh, on the other side. So it seems to stop the arrows with no issues. I'm gonna send another one. Um, this time I'm gonna kneel down a little bit so that the arrow's going in parallel to the separations between them. I'm kind of hoping I can put one right in between one of the um, mats to see if it uh, uh, if that reduces the amount of friction on the arrow or something like that all right so it entered right at the top looks like so that was basically right at the top, sort of in between it. Probably wasn't getting uh, the full amount of friction and uh, definitely still stopped it without a problem. Uh, plenty of arrows still sticking out. I got the 3D target that I've been shooting at because my bag target back here, as you can see, has seen better days. The problem that I kept having with this thing is uh, they put this material in there. I don't know exactly what this stuff is, but it's like this weird netting with this nylon webbing between it. And when my arrows would go through there, they get stuck in that nylon webbing and there's just no way to get your arrow out of it. So unfortunately my arrows are really expensive. So I just cut the bag open and I'm done with this piece of junk. Those are like 75 bucks to buy those. The target I'm about to put together cost me a hundred bucks and uh, should be able to get a lot of use out of it. All right, so I got a pack of ratchet straps. Any ratchet straps gonna do really. Why do they make these things so difficult to open? It's like, it's like a special test of your manhood that I'm failing right now. But you know what? I have the cheat codes. There we go. And then I got uh, two of the two by fours. I drilled three eighths inch holes on either end. So what I'm gonna do these are going to go on the bottom. I'm going to take these ratchet straps. I'm going to put the hooks through those holes. And those hooks are going to stay down towards the ground. So this is going to be one right here. Put that like that. We'll put the ratchet strap on the opposite side. Just to create a slightly more balanced situation in the way that the straps are tightened down. So, 
All right, there they are, all stacked up. Uh, pretty happy with that. Um, you might be wondering why I decided to make it so tall uh, and not make it shorter and wider. And though that is an option, I could take some of these and cut them in half and attach them with these puzzle pieces so that they're you know, a foot wider. The reason I decided to keep it tall and skinny is because when I'm shooting my bow, especially when I'm practicing or setting things up, I rarely need, uh, I, I rarely need wiggle room from left to right because usually I get uh, that part, like let's say I'm sighting in my bow, I get that dialed in at close up at 10, 20 yards. This is more than enough space side to side. It's two feet wide. Um, but when it comes time to, to dial in at um, the pins for different distances, or if I'm switching weights to a different size arrow, um, then having that up and down uh, ability really helps a lot. And that's why I decided to make it taller because let's say I switch uh, arrow weights and I want to see where I'm hitting. If I'm aiming right here, I can miss by like 18 inches and still be in the target. So that was, um, that was kind of the reason that I made it taller. All right, so now comes the top parts. So as I mentioned, I got these other two two by fours that I took some sandpaper and I rounded off the edges. Those edges are gonna go towards the top. I could take this ratchet strap, go right over the top, and then that smoother part's gonna allow that ratchet strap to slide a little bit. And then I can use the, the ratchet strap to actually tension this thing down. clicks at a time give it a wiggle to get those straps to uh, slide around the way they need to just kind of shake it it'll settle where it needs to be That looks pretty good. Probably tighten it just a little bit extra. It's not gonna hurt. All right. Pretty happy with that. So one of the really nice things about having just like a big target with no particular point to aim at is you can create things to aim at. So one thing I like to do is take a pool noodle and slice a little section off of it. Just take a safety pin, like a, a clothing pin, put that in there and you can just stick it anywhere that you want on that target. Now you got somewhere to aim. You can put a few of them and then if you shoot in one spot and you kind of tear up that one spot and it gets kind of soft, just take that and move it to another area. Um, you know, and same thing goes for these uh, these, uh, uh, these sheets, if you know, if I shoot in one area a lot and it starts getting kind of soft and it's not uh, stopping the arrows as well, I could take this apart and reorganize these sheets so that that soft spot ends up down here and not in the areas that I'm shooting. So I'm gonna fling a few arrows at it, see how it does. All that stuff you just watched about this target, I actually filmed about a year ago. Uh, and I wanted to make sure this target was gonna last a long time uh, before I put it out there. So um, I've been shooting at this target uh, for a year straight and I've been shooting through the entire off season. Um, I would say I've probably put about a thousand arrows into this, this target. So the reason I've been shooting so much over the past year is because as you guys know, I had uh, shoulder surgery a couple years ago, and my shoulder just hasn't been the same since, and I've been trying to build up my poundage. Um, so since I first made this target, at that time I was shooting at 52 pounds, now I'm shooting at 62. And I discovered that my draw length was a little bit short. Uh, so I increased my draw length by an inch and a half. Um, and so these arrows are actually moving 
Um, they're moving about 35 to 40 feet per second faster than they were in that previous video. And as you can see, they still only stick out just a little bit out of the back. Um, and the target's holding up great. So was that $100 well spent? Hell yeah. I recommend anybody build a target like this. Uh, and as you can see, I have this Morel's M48 target right here that I'm actually kind of using as a backstop for my 3D target. Um, if you can get your hands on one of these, do it. Uh, but they're expensive, they're like $800. But this one, uh, a friend of ours told us about a place that was uh, selling some used ones. And uh, I was able to pick this up for, for just a hundred bucks. You can see on the back side, it's all shot up. Um, but uh but anyway i was able to get that cheap uh but some people don't want to spend 800 dollars on a target and you can't really find them cheap very often so this is definitely an option that anybody can afford and it's definitely worth the money so with that thank you guys for watching this video i hope it was helpful uh if any of you guys build something like this let us know how it goes um and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure you do it because we're rolling into archery season now so we're gonna have lots of great content coming out um let's see what else we got oh and we have a couple cool events coming up including a scouting workshop if anybody's interested in that uh if you go on our facebook page you can find all the information for those events uh and with that thank you guys for watching peace out